April. How you doing? How you doing? You? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right, my man. So, <laughs> as I was, I was saying, I got a quite a few stories. Uh, they're all personal. There's nothing that somebody told me or anything like that. Um, pretty much through through all my life, I've been having all these episodes. Um, and he had he has come down to the point that I I believe that I'm the one hunted. It's not the house. It's <laughs> It's not the places uh, that I move into. It, I mean, it just, it's like, whatever it is, it's been following me all through my life. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to start, I guess, from the beginning. Uh, I'm actually, I'm, a, I'm from a city back in Mexico. I'm Mexican. And uh, okay. I'm of uh, a, uh, I guess, uh, Caucasian descendants. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, well, back when I was a, a child, uh, I'm saying I was not bigger or, but yeah, I was not, I was about 60 years old, uh, as far as I can recall. And uh, as I was, I was... When I was this kid, um, every night uh, after dark, you know, um, uh, I needed to use the restroom from time to time. And, um, well, the restroom, it was actually outside the house, if that it makes any sense to any of your listeners. Uh, so for me to go and relieve myself, I would have to walk out of my room into the patio all the way to the back of the house. Like, like way back on the, like almost at the end of the backyard. They had this little room, had a restroom, and it was more like a latrine. You know, it was just a hole on the, on the ground with some wood around, you know, to resemble in a seat or whatever. So, uh, it got to the point that my mom, she actually started to worry about me because I was, I was so afraid after my first encounter, I, I got so afraid to go and relieve myself that I start doing it on my bed, you know, because I mean, it, it got to that point wow. and I was always reaching out to my mom, you know, mom, there's something out there, there's something that follows me, and uh, and and you know, my mom, she's just one of those women, you know, they're like, oh, don't be afraid, son. I mean, you can do it. And I guess at the time they thought that I was just making stuff up. And uh, but I told my mom, and and I don't know, and uh, I guess I need to, I need to let you guys know. First, before I keep going with this, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, uh, it is called a Catrin. That's a Spanish word uh, for this beam, you know, if, if you can call it that. Okay. And if you're not familiar with that term, I guess the closest thing for me, uh, for me to try to explain to you what it is. If you ever watch that movie Coco and you see that uh, you get these characters that they dressed up like uh, like a mariachi but with the head with uh, of a skull face you know almost like the uh, oh, okay. yeah, ghost know. rider the, well the that's, a that's a Katrin that's a Katrin and the candy skull right yes yes yeah. that's exactly what it is and uh I'm not the first one to see it. I mean, on the Mexican lo folklore, you know, I mean, it goes almost like the whipping lady. I don't know if you're familiar with that, too. 
Um, no. Well, it's this lady that appears on um, uh, on the pretty much where there's water, like rivers or uh, dams or whatever. And there's uh -huh. this lady that is always weeping for her lost child. It's almost like she's always looking for their child. I mean, her child, you know, because oh, she okay. lost it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've heard something like that. Okay. All right. All right. So this thing, you know, every time, every night, I mean, I used to see it just about every night when I was a kid. And he never moved. He never did anything. Uh, he never tried to grab me. He never moved. He never talked. But I always, he was always it's almost like he was following me everywhere I went, especially oh. at night. So not just you know? to the bathroom, it would be all the time during the uh, day, just more at night or? Well, sometimes when I was laying on bed, you know, that sometimes, um, I can't remember what is it called, but, uh, you know, when you're a kid and you start, once you turn the light off, you start seeing shadows and you start making your mind start trying to give it some kind of form and then you start seeing stuff that is not even there. You know, like you see a coat and you think that there's actually a person standing there. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I for the longest time, I thought that that's, that's what it was. But the face, you know, the face, it was always there and I thought it was just, I, I mean... From so for some time, I thought it was just my imagination. Until one day, he actually moved. You know, I saw him move his head from one side to the other side. Oh boy! That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just to, just just to talk about it right now. I mean, I'm I'm, man, I'm just I'm starting to get nervous. You know, <laughs> you gave me the chills too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm 50 years old, you know, I ain't got no reason to be lying at this point in my life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, that's, that's one of my stories, you know, that's, that's pretty much the first one that I can think of, uh, with time, yeah. you know, I, I started to think that, that, that being that that I was looking at, I actually think that he wasn't there to harm me. Oh, it's okay. almost like so like like he was there to protect me. Oh, all right. So you didn't feel like real afraid, or did you feel afraid at the time, or did you think about? Oh, this? at the at the time, I was man. I used to relieve myself from bed. I mean, it got to the point that I didn't want to get out of bed because uh, oh, I was I was. Uh, you know, as a kid, you take your covers and you put them over your head and you think that's your shield and nothing is going to get yeah. you, right? <laughs> well, that's how it was. You know, I mean, I just thought and and, from, and time went on and I just kept on. Um, I mean, it's kind of, I got used to it. It got to the point that I, sometimes I was wondering uh, where, uh, where it was what he was doing because i mean he stopped visiting visiting me at night you know so i was i mean he got to the point that i was missing whatever that thing was you know <laughs> i was like like where he go you know where is he how come he's not here and uh not used to him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh that's the one i'm gonna that's the only one I get, uh, I'm gonna share with you guys tonight, and you know I'm I'll, I'm already following you, so I just gonna keep an eye open, and next time that you uh, that you get your your live, I'll make sure to jump in and uh, give you another one, cause yeah, I got plenty of them. We're definitely gonna be doing it at least once a week, so you can call in anytime. You're welcome back, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, I mean I I don't. Uh, 
I was talking with uh, Big uh, Victor Condiv. I don't know if you're familiar with this guy. Uh, he's got a he's got a show on YouTube. Uh, what is he's it? Got Victor Condiv. Uh, he goes by Big Condiv. No, I haven't heard of him. Well, well the guy's got a a dogman show. He's got a Bigfoot show, and uh, he just recently, about six months ago, he had a. He's got another one. It's a podcast. It is called uh, My Paranormal Encounter. Uh, I talked to him, and he actually is the one that encouraged me to to start sharing some of my um, some some of the things that had happened to me through my life. Because I mean, it, it just I mean, right now it's it's just like nothing compared to some of the stuff that I had seen. Right. You know, I have um, run, yeah. I mean, I have run into a, a goat man. I had a uh, encounters with this, uh, I, I call it the, the lady on red, which it was another beam that I, that I run into. Um, something keeps knocking on my windows, my doors, my walls. And just about two weeks ago. Uh, I mean, it got so bad that they actually broke a glass in my windows. So next time, I'll just go live, and uh, I can show you some of this. <laughs> I can show you the window, and I kind of give you the layout of my house. Um, I got a TikTok. I did, I did uh, record myself because I was, I'm working on my house about this um, house, and it was like all torn torn to hell yeah and since uh the day that i moved in to now it's almost like i'm on my third year i've been working on a house and uh, i made a video about this shower area you know and and people they they thought i was playing because I, I actually called that room the the haunted restroom uh it's on spanish i'm sorry you know but but uh it's on my profile i mean it's on my it's on my profile you know i got everything is recorded it's over there you know to all the spanish speaking uh persons here you know you you more than welcome to go and check it out uh and as i'm going uh, i mean i got it all the walls because i was gonna replace all the she rock do all the plumbing and whatnot and when i got to the electrical you know as i'm working inside the restroom you know something just kept on turning the light off you know so i just got up and turned the light on and then i was going back again to do what i was doing and the light came off again and it was just like a back and forth back and forth kind of thing so i decided to grab my phone and start recording the whole thing and it got to the point that I'm talking to whatever thing is there flicking the light off. And, and I, t you know, I was just talking to myself, you know, <laughs> and I, and I told him, I said, okay, ghost, you got my attention. Are you going to turn the light off? And sure enough, you know, it turns the light <laughs> right off. Oh. I start laughing, you know, cause I mean, I really got nervous, you know, so I'm laughing. And I'm like, okay, can you turn it back on? And sure enough, it, the light comes on. And it's on video, <laughs> you know. And uh, I mean, like right now, it's already done, finished, everything. And I got a motion sensor light on it. And sure enough, you know, the light keeps coming on just about every night, you know, just randomly. <laughs> Two, three in the morning. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you for... For allowing me to tell my story and i guess i'll see you guys next time absolutely yeah i appreciate it you coming on and sharing it and you're welcome back anytime here we go let me see what we got here yuri hold on one second hello hey how are you hi i'm well how are you good um, hi everybody. My name is Judy. Um, I have a lot of stories actually, 
But I'm going to tell this story. Um, when I w- used to be a truck driver, um, I've seen a lot of shit on the road, honestly. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, you sound real good. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I used to see a lot of things on the road, but this um, uh, this one particular instance creeped me out a little bit uh, because I've never experienced anything like it. And um, this particular day, me and my ex, we were team drivers, and our hours was running out, so... I had like 10 minutes to get off on the exit to park for our 34 hour reset. And uh, we ended up, we were leaving from Pendleton, Washington, and we ended up in Risk, Washington, um, off an exit where there was like a shell gas station, but it allowed, you know, um, trucking, park, truck parking. So uh, I ended up parking there, and it was like, behind no it was like in front of a railroad track and as I'm entering uh and backing up to into a parking spot I seen a lady and she was just standing by one of the pumps and I was like that's so random you know like she was just standing there by herself looking lost and then I seen a bathroom a women's bathroom like on the outside of the store and I was like, okay, I need to go to that bathroom because it had been a long drive and I really had pee. So I told my ex to get out with me because we didn't know the area. I don't know that area. I'm from Georgia. So traveling everywhere, you know, some places you don't want to go there by yourself. So I asked my ex to get out with me and walk me to the bathroom and wait for me or whatever. So he gets out with me, but I seen the lady who was standing there looking random going to the um the bathroom. So I was hoping it was like a bathroom with many stalls. I get there. I go inside. The lady who went in before me, she was in the first stall, and then there's like another stall. So I was relieved. And but as I'm sitting in the stall, you know, doing my business or whatever. I hear her breathing super hard, like something's wrong with her. She's like, uh, 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 and I'm like, what the, f-? you know, like, is she okay? So I, you know, I asked her, I, I'm like, are you okay? And she never said nothing. You could just hear her breathing really hard. So I'm like, okay, something's wrong. So I hurry up. I finish doing my business in the restroom. I get up, flush. And as I'm washing my hands, I'm like, ma'am, are you okay? And then it sounded like she was crying a little bit, but she never answered me. So after I washed my hands, I knock on the door again to ask if she was okay. And it was like this big whoosh of wind just floated in the air. And I'm like, what? So I knock on the door, but when I knock this time, the door swung open by itself and nobody was in the stall. So now I'm creeped the fuck out because I'm like, what the fuck? Where did she go? I seen her going to the bathroom. So I'm like, creeped out. I hurried up. I ran out the bathroom. (laughs) I ran out the bathroom because I was so creeped out. And I was so shocked because I'm like, where did she go, man? There's no way. (laughs) Okay. I go out there, I ask my ex, I'm like, hey, did you see the lady come out the bathroom? And he was like, no, you're the only one who went in the bathroom. I'm like, no, 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 no. Before I went in the bathroom, there was a lady who went in the bathroom. She had on shorts, a black hoodie, and a ponytail. He's like, babe, I ain't seen nobody going to, you know, the bathroom. So now I'm really creeped out because this bathroom only had like, the bathroom stalls, the uh, you know, where you wash your hands, a yeah. ceiling, and that's it. There's nowhere, yeah. no other exits. So I'm really, really creeped out. So now we go to the truck, 
And I'm sitting there and he's like, hey, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm really creeped the fuck out right now. Because I know what I saw. I know I experienced a woman in there. She's breathing hard as hell. But then she disappears. That don't make sense to me. So he's like, um, just do your logs and we'll, you know, we'll look around. I'm like, hell no, I'm not looking for shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sitting there in the truck, but I'm watching the bathroom for like an hour to two hours, honestly, watching all the women go in and out the bathroom. And I'm like, that's really weird. Guess what? Right? I think it had to be like two hours of me just watching. It was like right before sunset, the lady comes out the fucking bathroom. And I'm yelling at my ex. I'm like, hey, there she goes. There she goes. And he said, what the fuck? Yeah, I remember her. She was standing right by the pumps. I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I remember. I was like, babe, she was not in the bathroom stall. There's no fucking way she just came out of that bathroom. He was like, calm down, calm down. Let's see what she do. I kid you not. She leaves the bathroom, walks around to the front of the convenience store. You could see when she walked into the convenience store, as the doors open, her image disappeared again. <sighs> her image disappears. And you could see something is knocking shit off the, you know, where they have candy and chips and stuff, you could see some, like a force or something knocking shit off the shelves and opening the doors to the coolers for the sodas and stuff. But you can't see her image. You could just see all of this stuff happening. So I'm like, and he's tripping out. My My ex was tripping out. He was like, wow he said are we really seeing this i'm like yes we are so the next thing you know the lady that was working in there she comes from the back and she's like she's looking around trying to figure out what's knocking stuff over and i'm like no lady just stay in the back you know that's what i'm thinking to myself just stay in the back and the next thing you know, the front, you know, the, the doors to open the store opens up again. And now the lady's image is back. You can see her full image. She was a tall, um, pale, you know, pale skinned lady with black hair. And all of a sudden, she looks up in the sky and I promise you, her whole image disappeared. And when it disappeared... I was freaked the fuck out. I was ready to go. So I told my ex, I was like, let's go. He was like, we don't have any hours. I'm like, fuck this shit. <laughs> we need to get out of here. <laughs> we got to get out of here because I can't take it. Because I don't know. You know, I believe in a lot of things. I believe in skinwalkers. I believe in vampires. So I'm like, I don't like what I saw. <laughs> and it freaked me out because I know what I felt in the bathroom and it was not good, you know. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, at this point, I don't know if she's a ghost. Or I don't know if she's a vampire. I just know I'm ready to fucking go. Because if she could do that, she could come in this truck. That's what I told my ex. And he was, yeah. like, he was like, just calm down. If anything happened, then we'll leave. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> But we had to wait. I couldn't move the truck. And yeah, that's one of the many stories that I have that I actually experienced. I actually witnessed it with my eyes. And all I could think about that night was, what if she was murdered there? You know, or I don't know. That's all I could think about. I couldn't even sleep. I never slept. Like that whole 34 hours, I did not sleep. Oh, yeah, I don't blame you. I wouldn't sleep either. Yeah, it was super scary. And I wouldn't be looking at the bathroom door either, waiting for it to come out. I would like, <laughs> No, I think the only reason why I kept watching was because I could not believe what I experienced oh, in right. the bathroom. Yeah. You it's know, like, 
like knowing that somebody was in there with you and they were breathing hard as hell and you heard it and you felt it and then to knock on the door to check on that person because I really thought something was wrong with her you know I really thought like maybe she was having a heart attack or something I don't know I just thought something was wrong with her so my human nature kicked in to see if she was okay and when I seen that she disappeared but I felt I felt something in that bathroom like a wind fly up to the ceiling but I never seen her right so it was like what (laughs) (laughs) you know like hold on I seen this lady come into the bathroom. I felt her and heard her right next to me. So how the fuck is she not here now? So I think that's what made me, you know, continue looking at the door to the bathroom, trying to see if the lady was going to come out eventually. (laughs) And she did. But when she did, it was proof to my ex that I wasn't crazy because he was looking at me like I was crazy, you know? (laughs) And he didn't believe me. Like, I kept telling him, he was like, I don't remember who you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I was just praying she showed up so I could prove him wrong. And I did. But I proved to him more things, too. Well, we proved each other. (laughs) because he was like taken aback when he seen that shit he's like did we just see that I'm like yes yes we did and yeah but we seen a lot of things together on the road honestly a lot of things from UFOs to huh a lot of things going on though our moderator here, trucking UFOs, he's a trucker too, and he sees a lot of things out there as well. So I hear those stories from him. Yeah, like, I mean, I know a lot of people don't believe in that shit, but I've seen, oh, I've seen a lot of UFOs, but I also seen something that I heard in the trucker story about the walking goat on a particular highway. I've seen that shit. The walking like, goat. Yeah, the walking goat, the one that's staying on its two legs. Oh, and boy. it wears like a red <laughs> raincoat. And it pushes a stroller as if it's pushing a baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a new one to me. <laughs> yeah. No, that that was oh that was scary because yeah. when we when we saw that, it was like nighttime, and we was rolling though, so I never stopped. <laughs> cause, um, cause, um, my ex, he was like, "Hey, I think that's a lady with a baby." So, you know, your natural instinct is like, "Okay, slow down." So as we're slowing down. And I'm, cause I'm looking out the window, but as I'm looking, as we're slowing down, I tell him, I said, keep going. He said, why? I said, keep fucking going. Matter of fact, speed up. (laughs) He said, what? What is it? I was like, that's not a fucking lady. That's a walking goat. He was like, no. I'm like, I'm serious. That's a walking goat pushing a stroller. He was like, How? How is that possible? I'm like, you know what? We see a lot of weird shit out here. And that was another reason why I got off the road. Because we seen too much. To the point where if we would have shared half of the stories we shared, people wouldn't believe us. Oh, yeah. They They wouldn't believe us. Well, we I have a here. lot of stories, though, but I'll come back another week and share some more. Yeah, definitely. Please. That would be awesome. We got someone coming in. Who do we got today? Let's go. Here we go. We got a time. Is this a time traveler? She walks. Come. We're at it. How are you? 
Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me up. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. So I have I have a couple of stories about time travel, but it's not really time travel. <clears throat> um, I had a sciatic nerve issue for the past three years, and um, I consulted somebody here on TikTok, and he was like, that's a chakra issue. Um, before you go to bed to, at night, ask your angels to clear up anything that might have happened in your past life. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's diagnosis and that's diagnosis, that's medicine, I'll do that. And ever since I've done that, A, my sciatic nerve pain has literally disappeared. But um, B, I've been going on these like mini trips um, back in time in my sleep, like as dream. So it could just be like psychosomatic, but um, the first time I asked, I was brought back to um, a time, this is so strange because I don't identify with any of this stuff, like um, the stuff that I experienced, it doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, um, <clears throat> culturally, I mean, I was brought back to a time when I lived um, in Pompeii, which it doesn't make sense to me that I would live in Pompeii, but apparently that's where I lived. And I was a merchant's daughter, and I knew the volcano was going to blow. In fact, for a couple of weeks before it actually blew, there had been activity, and most people um, were just ignoring it because sometimes that used to happen and absolutely nothing would happen as a result um but i knew and a few other well-known um people in the community knew but this is strange but in the um it really wasn't a dream like i could tell you the layout of the house who my parents and my sisters were um the kind of clothes i was wearing like how they were made, who made them, how much was paid for them. Like it was very strange. I just was living a life. And um, I made a conscious decision, I guess, in that dream slash um, past life, not to leave. Like I could have left. A lot of people actually could have just left. But at the time, a woman traveling alone with like no money could easily be like enslaved or just disappeared. It's just not something that you did. You would right. probably rather die than do that because it just, you wouldn't end up anywhere good. And there were plenty of ships going in and out of the port and I could have hopped on any one of them and I didn't. And I got the feeling that a lot of people who lived in Pompeii could have done the same thing and decided not to. And then it happened. Like, it happened really fast. It was almost like a flash. And when I woke up in the morning, um, I don't know, my sciatic nerve pinch was gone. I had had it for three years, and it was just completely gone. So that's my time travel story. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't make a lot of sense. It was very real to me. Um, I do a lot of astral projecting without meaning to. Like, uh -huh. I don't necessarily invite these things into my life because they happen. I have learned to become a lot less reactive to it and a lot less scared. But I definitely don't invite it. Um, right. And I do a lot of going back in the past and looking at things I've done thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, and just going, huh, okay, that's why I do that now. That's interesting. Um, and I guess, like, throughout my life, I've had a lot of paranormal experiences, a lot of them, and they come and go. It isn't, like, a constant when it comes to, like, hearing and seeing ghosts and dead people. It's not constant. Sometimes, like, the activity is really, really, um, I don't know how to, like, sometimes it's it's very present, and sometimes it goes away for years, 
and then it comes back. But um, I do have a lot of stories. I'd like to come up sometime um, other than now and, and tell a few stories. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome back to come anytime. We'll be doing this at least once a week now and then. That's cool. Maybe a week. I love it, by I, the way. Can I ask about your experience when you went back in time and you were in, you know, living in Pompeii? How much time do you feel that you like spent there? Like while you I were spent... having experience, like, you know what I mean? No, I know you might have actually lived there in a past life, but while you're having the experience, were you there just like in a regular dream where it's like bits and pieces or were you there for like, you know? I was there for a day. Wow. And it happened to be <laughs> the day that the, um, that it blew the same day yeah yeah that's the day that i was brought back to like i could tell you the kind of the kind of shoes i was wearing they weren't even real shoes they were they were made of cloth like a very um not a thick cloth a thin starchy cloth that like upper crusty woman wore because they weren't usually leaving the house you know it was a fashion to have these shoes made out of fabric so strange <laughs> like the detail you know what I mean? but yeah that's how you know it's something like real that's you know but we just don't understand but it's definitely like this past life you know is definitely real or time travel is it's just something and we know it i mean this just confirms it you know yeah for me it definitely did um oh yeah i think i found that guy again and i thanked him when you tell your story about people you're confirming it, you know, to them too, because we want to believe. I hope so. Believe so in people this. don't think they're loopy. Like these things are, they're phenomena. They happen. We might not have the entire, um, you know, explanation for it, but it's there. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. I'm gonna hop down now. No, yeah. Thanks again, and and want to come on just. Uh, make sure you follow, and I usually throw a little video up before to uh, let everybody know. And... Oh, cool. I am following, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I try to go into uh, after the shows and uh, the little list and see who I can follow back. So. Cool. Please do. Build it up. Build the community up. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good one. Get people off. Oh, I was gonna try it. <laughs> I didn't get to try it yet. I, I learned it. Ooh, all right. Um, no, I mean, I think we have a <clears throat> past life regression right there. Spending a whole day in it. People have like you know hypnot get hypnotized and have visions of it and like little bits and pieces. But that's the first time I think I've heard of a whole day. Thank you very much again for coming on. Let's see who our next person is. We got in the green room here. Pepe the Cat. It's not Pepe Le Pew. No, I'm just joking. All right, let me see. Here we go. Welcome on to the experience as it loads in. How you doing? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Good. Come on. Pretty good for us. I was trying to see uh, what is shadow people. Shadow people. Uh, there's a real popular one. I actually did a little video of it on my YouTube channel, and the Hat Man is a real popular one, and it's just a black uh, silhouette of a man, usually just standing in someone's bedroom. Uh, most of the time, it'll be in the doorway or in the corner or like right at the foot of their bed, and it just oh. stands. It just stands there, and it, you can't see any features on its face, but it'll you know it, and you just have this feeling that it's staring at you. And there's been, uh, the stories I've read, there's been no reports of anybody getting hurt by it, but it just stares there, it stands there. It's always the same exact figure with the hat, just total black, so. Is that similar to, uh, like, sleep paralysis? Like, it... there's, there's reports of it when people are seeing it. That's one of the, the main things is they get, they're paralyzed and they can't move and do anything about it. And the thing's just standing there staring at it. Damn. Just telling it is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you seen one, or do you? No, think I, was might... just, I, I was just curious about that. One. No, that's all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so 
Yeah, I never heard of that one. Man. Go on YouTube and, and YouTube it, and there's a whole bunch of different, like, that's just one example of it that I, you know, the main one that I've heard about when I did my research, but there's a few other, uh, and they're all just as creepy. <laughs> yeah, and what's your take on the UFOs and the aliens? Oh, they're definitely out there. Our moderator in here, Trucking UFOs, he actually has a few videos. I actually come. heard that they, they don't come from, like, on a, another planet. There, there's actually more land, like, beyond Antarctica, you know? Or maybe in a hollow section of the Earth. Yeah, like, I've heard that, too. Yep. They, they could be coming, you know, from within the planet, but we, I, we actually think that they come from far away, but it's actually just way closer than we actually think. Right. Or like in the ocean, they might have some. I've heard of bases in, under the ocean, like deep under there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just like that new uh, Wakanda movie. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> no, I didn't get to see that one. No. Oh yeah, no, it's because you said underwater, and yeah, the whole Mayan uh, section of it, it was it was all underwater. It was pretty sick. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> It could be from other dimensions too, you know, just something that we can't see at all. They just yeah, pop that's in and true. Out. Yeah, that's another. There's so many theories on them, and I tell you, man, the more you hear, the more questions you have. I know, bro. It's because uh, I don't know. Like, there's a, a mother of conspiracies, like one where uh, we live in a dome, and um, there's an ice wall all around us, and basically there's more land beyond the ice wall, and there, you know, there's more crazier stuff that we we thought was extinct or something, you know. Oh wow, yeah, I haven't heard that. One. I've heard like we're in a dome, but like the the, the dome is like out, uh, beyond the our dome is like water. And it's like all just we're like we're a bubble in water. Yeah, yeah, that. something like that. Yeah, there's more water beyond the dome, also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's there's so many like theories and weird things, man. It's so crazy. <laughs> I know, and it's crazy. You can't even explore it or really find out for yourself unless you have a lot of money to you know get a ship and go actually go. All around the ice wall and check it out yourself. <laughs> right. That's the worst part about it is we'll never know because we can never go there and do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. That That's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, unless you have, unless you make a lot of money all of a sudden. Right. If you get a million, a couple million, you can get out there. But even then, the government has half of that. If you try to get out there, they send out the jets and shoot you down for something. I know. Yeah. I, I think they said it was illegal to go to Antarctica or any anything yeah. to do with the deep sea oh. or other ice walls. Huge parts of it are like off limits to like anybody. They can't even go up there. So. That's insane. I got to get a submarine, bro. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Come pick me up on the way. We'll go. Yeah. That's the only way, bro. That's the only way to really, uh, you know, deceive them. That's there's no other way. Cause like in the plane, they have the radars and stuff, don't they? Yeah. Oh yeah. They'll get you. God damn, that's crazy. It is. <laughs> yeah, the crazy world we live in. Yeah, dude. Like, I even heard there was a huge hole in in uh, Antarctica, and I, I don't know where it leads. It could be a hollow earth or something. Yeah, I've heard of that. I saw a video on YouTube of some guy who, like, supposedly went there. Showed yeah, I seen, it, I seen it on National Ge Geographic, believe it or not. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, it was on regular TV. It wasn't even, like, hidden. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wow, now they're just putting it right out there, yeah. Yeah, see? dude. It, I mean, it's a huge hole. Like, you you can see it from space, supposedly, they say. Yeah. There's definitely something in there. That, that's an entrance to something. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think it could be some kind of, like, a hollow earth, but a section of it. Not the whole earth is hollow. Maybe just the whole section of it. Right. Like, big parts of it could have, like, you know, huge tunnels and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. It's definitely, there's a lot going on, you know, and it's like, we'll never know a part of it, like even a percent of it, for sure. But that's what makes it fun, too, is coming I up. mean, because, like, look at the next project, it's going to be called the uh, Project Bluebeam. Why'd you hear about it in the next year or something? Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. That's been going around on TikTok. Yeah, actually, you actually, you yeah, you seen some on TikTok. Uh, you know, they say the government shot down some UFOs. That you're gonna hear a lot more of that. Watch. Oh yeah. I just don't really know what the whole. Um, I guess you could say I don't know the agenda. I don't know what's the purpose of it, but I'm sure there's a reason. Watch, we'll find out. 
Yeah, we'll find out the hard way, you know. The hard I mean, way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like that. I don't know. Remember that one dude, Andrew Tate? It's like that guy said, yeah, the only escape is you have to have a lot of money and just leave the whole country if you need to, you know? Yeah. It's like literally even, the only... Even then, though, they could find you somewhere, you know what I mean? They'll find you out there somewhere. No, yeah, I mean, you could just go to another country where you're 100% safe, like, say, Dubai. That's a state police. America can't just go over there and grab someone. Yeah, true. true. But yeah, that's crazy, bro. We'll see what the future what the future holds. <laughs> All we can do, you know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, because now anything that I see UFO on the sky, I think it's fake now. It could be some hologram or it could be the same government. <laughs> yeah, there's so many fake videos out there that it's like it just ruins it for everything you know so you, yeah so you especially want... during this time when they say the project blue beam's coming out either this year or next year somewhere somewhere around there oh great well we guess we'll just wait for that yeah <laughs> oh. yeah get ready for that one <laughs> you don't do you have any stit has have you seen anything or nah i haven't really Nothing yet. <laughs> you will. As far as UFO activity, no, I haven't really. No, oh, no ghosts. Nothing moving in your house. Uh, I mean, one time, we, you know, it's funny. One time, uh, there was a time where, uh, uh, I, I, I had a, I had a room with my brother. Like, we had the twin beds or whatever. We grew up together, and um, this guy, um, he goes to the kitchen, and he tries to like sneak over there to get something to eat. And uh, I swear to God, a whole chair completely moved from place. And, um, like, it just scraped the whole floor. And and this guy, he, he runs back. He's like, that wasn't you? I was like, no, what the hell? I thought that was you. And and I was like, well, damn, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, a whole chair just moved by itself. I mean, that's probably the only ghost story I got. And then, you know, it's kind of crazy because it actually happened. You know, it's like, what the fuck? What moved the chair? Because all the windows were closed. It wasn't windy. It was, it was only him. So I feel like... Uh, he went into the, you know, like to the kitchen and there must have been some kind of spirit or a ghost there. And it, it, it saw him and then, you know, it kind of just flew and moved the whole chair or whatever. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. Like it got like shocked and like. Yeah, you know. yeah. Because that was the only explanation. I, I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. Those, we didn't have a pet or, a, you know, a pet dog or cat or anything. <laughs> oh, wow. And that was the only time that something like that happened. Yeah, that was that one time, and there was another time too where, um, where uh, we, we kind of uh, like threw parties in in our house, and, and some friends like they slept over or whatever, right? And um, I don't know, th this guy he was into kind of like heavy metal stuff, the music he was bumping at night, you know, everybody's drinking, and and I swear to God, this guy got so scared that he just left home, <laughs> and then we heard like footsteps on the. It, it's like a two story house, and there was a bunch of footsteps on the top stairs. We were like, "What the fuck is that noise?" <laughs> and nothing was up there. Like there was no. It was unexplainable stuff. There was a cup on the counter in the in the kitchen, and uh, that same friend that you know he's all over here acting tough with his heavy metal. The same cup flies by itself, like from you know from the kitchen counter to the floor. And everybody was like, what the fuck? Nobody, you know, nobody touched it or moved it. I was like, and then, yeah, he got super scared, bro. He he literally left. I mean, not not that he lived far. He's just a couple blocks away. But but yeah, yeah that, that was kind of crazy. Yeah, he even said that when he was sitting on the, on the chair, like, uh, you know, putting the music with the YouTube, he felt like something like in his spine or something. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but that that's probably it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's more than enough right <laughs> yeah so I, I kind of i kind of did experience some kind of ghost stories like but not not nothing too crazy like you know like the the movie's paranormal activity <laughs> fucking getting choked by a ghost or some shit <laughs> yeah pulled out of your bed and dragged across the floor <laughs> yeah <laughs> nothing too crazy <laughs> My, i feel like mines are basic because there's always uh somebody with a story where the chair moved or, or something fell or something you know yeah, no, yeah. Listen to to me though. Any there's no like they're all just as creepy. You know what I mean? It's like anything moving too. It's just like yeah, right. dude. It's pretty creepy. Yeah, yeah. All you right. Know, well, it it kind of uh it kind of explains like there's this girl that um I didn't know her but like my I knew knew uh, <laughs> I knew her brother I guess you could say, 
And this girl played the Ouija board, bro. The 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 Ouija board, and she literally, the devil literally, pretty much got inside her, bro. I was like, huh. and that was the story, the rumor by the brother. The same brother told me the the whole story that he was holding her down. She got super strength out of nowhere, and you know, just saying a bunch of crazy stuff. And um, you know, even her brother, I know he's like a good good fighter. He's you know he's been there, done that on some street fights. And this guy was trying to hold her down, and he flew across the room of her strength, and that's his little sister. I was like, what? Damn. <laughs> this spiritual stuff, it's all real, bro. <laughs> Oh yeah, if they can if they can get into you, they can do some damage. I'll tell you that. But what's up with the Ouija board and always, you know, like a, it brings like a portal to hell or something. Like, what the fuck? I'm Is not, the not, not portal? saying that it's every case, but there has been some cases, bro. Yeah, you gotta be careful with those things. It's no joke. Yeah, it's crazy. Like nobody believes in, you know, it's I'm not. I'm not saying nobody, but a lot of people they don't really believe in the whole priest concept. But if if the exorcism gets inside of them, they're gonna be like, call the best priest in town. <laughs> like, like... Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not, I swear to God, bro. Everybody goes back to the Catholic priest when stuff like that happens, or if somebody's about to die, they want a Catholic priest at you know on their last uh, last couple, you know. Yeah, the last day they want they want them. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny, bro. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you calling in. I'm gonna try to get one more in before right, uh, yeah. the show. But if you do, if anything else happens or you happen to remember something, you're always welcome to call back in and, and talk about it. So. All right, or for if, sure, man. Yeah, I got to charge. You just want to chat, or yeah, if you want to chat about whatever uh, any current topic in the paranormal field or anything like that. So. All right, man. All right. You have a good night, buddy. BHL Rescue, here we go. Takes a minute sometimes to just enjoy. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Can you hear it? It still says invite on my thing, but can are you are you all right? Yeah, are I can there? hear you. Yeah. Sounds good. So so I run a rescue. I have about 70 animals here and um, the last week and a half, I've been keeping a, an older bulldog here. His owner was homeless and died two weeks ago. Um, the, the homeless encampment I take food down to all the time, got a hold of me and asked me if I would take him in until they could get together and figure out what they wanted to do with him. And I said, yes. Well, he was here. He's been here. For... Oh, what happened? Oh, no, we lost her. Did it say, does it say request to join for everybody? This happened earlier, like two hours ago. And everybody lost the request to join button on their screen. Oh, hold on. I think we got her. Hold on, hold on. This happened earlier, too, so I don't know if we were having that. Because the screen isn't popping up all the way. I wonder if there's an issue. Oh, there we go. Sorry, the weather is bad here today, so could be something to do with oh, the weather. Right. Here. Yeah, well, so no, we anyway, had that issue earlier. Yeah, so you go go with your story. That's what you did. So today, um, everybody went out this morning. He's been doing quite well with everybody. Um, but it's been really depressed, right? Um, you could tell the, the dog was missing his owner this afternoon. Yeah. And this is a sad story, guys. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not trying to bring everybody down. But this afternoon, he was standing in my kitchen and all of a sudden started barking in the corner and jumping around. And, and just he was very overweight, didn't move very well, but started acting really hyper and happy in the corner of my kitchen, barking at nothing, right? So then it was yeah. nap time. So I put all the dogs in, everybody lays down for a nap. And right before we got ready for nap time, he was doing this. And I asked him, I said, well, Bourbon, is your daddy here? Did he come to say hi to you? And he almost looked like he was trying to waggle his butt. 
And I said, well, you just tell your daddy that it's nap time if he wants to take a nap with you. He never oh. woke up. Oh, no. His daddy came and got him today. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not. He was an older dog. Um, and it was very sad. But it was very strange to watch. We, I'm in New Orleans, so we have a lot of that happens down here a lot. But he, he his dad came and got him today. Sorry, well, I didn't mean to bring everybody down. I just no, you know that he's he's in a good place now. So that was it was a nice thing, you know. Yeah, it was. It was nice that you know, but it was just very strange because uh, we're having. We're having an autopsy done on him, but I think it was a heart attack that took him because uh, it happened so fast. He just passed in his sleep, but it was very, very strange that he acted like he's seen somebody he knew and loved before he left. Yeah. Well, I believe that he did, so. I do, too. I, I strongly do. That's like. I love your channel, by the way. I watch all the time. I just now joined, but I watch you all the time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so Appreciate it. Thank, yeah. thank you for letting me come in and share. Yeah, anytime. You're welcome to come back. And if you have another story, we'd, we would love to hear it. So we'll be on mm -hmm. uh, coming up and then maybe uh, I have, during. I have two entities in my house that throw things around all the time. I've always got stories. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. I can't wait. <laughs> well, I had friends here. A couple weeks ago, they were singing, and evidently one of them didn't care for the song because he started slamming doors. And they come running out of the back of the house going, what is going on back there? I was like, <laughs> they're just letting you know they're here. <laughs> once in a while, they'll throw things around, and <laughs> it's kind of funny. But I'm in New Orleans, so it's, it's quite common down here. You'll, you'll see a lot of that. Lots of people have stories down here like that. Yeah. But I've been listening for a little while. I'm I I sat on the outside and was listening to everybody talk and I was like just deciding whether or not I wanted to try to share Bourbon's story, but it was just very Yeah. Very, I'm very strange. Glad you're... Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And anytime you, guys... you want to come back, just yeah, just Jump on in and hit the request to join, and we'll get you up on the next one. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Anytime. guys. I'm, I'm going to head out. I just wanted to share. All right, yeah. Hang out in the chat. That's going. I will. I'm, They're going I'm doing crazy. pictures right now, just listening to everybody. All right. <laughs> All right. Night, guys. Take care. Take care now. And do we have one more in here? We're going to have one more before we call it a night. Who do we got in here? Ruba Dunk Shoes. Ruba Dunk Shush. Let's see here. I apologize. Let's see. We got him joining in now. Ruba. What's up? What's up? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Sound good. Yeah, man. So my story's kind of weird. Um, it's and, and I'm coming on here because finally I can kind of talk about it. I try to talk about it over here and people don't want to hear it. They don't, I don't know. They don't, they just think, I don't know what they think. But, um, so I'm a skater, you know, I, I skate a lot. And, um, one night it was, um, it was October, October 11th, 21. I'm skating and all of a sudden about, I don't know, seven o'clock. I noticed, I, I, I live in HP. I noticed this light that was, Oh. I, I, pay, I pay no attention to it, so I'm just walking, I'm skating, and then when I get to the other side of, of the building, it was like 15 minutes or so, the light was still in the same place, and it was blinking. So I grabbed my phone, started, started recording it, asking people, what is that, what is that? They were saying it was probably a helicopter or a drone or something, right? Um, so I didn't think that it was, but I, you know, I, there was, I couldn't prove that it wasn't. So anyways, a year goes by, September... September 6th of 21, I'm by the beach by 11 o'clock, and I noticed um, 
I don't know. I, I thought it was a plane coming in from the ocean towards the shore, toward, towards the pier. And I'm looking at it because the lights, they're, they're pretty bright. So I was like, is that a plane? And then it kind of disappeared, but I thought it was, I, maybe there's clouds, you know? So I'm looking for it. There's no clouds. And it reappeared again. So I grabbed my phone and started filming it. Um, the next the next morning, it was yet yeah, the next morning, woke up, had my coffee. I'm outside. And this it was like six in the morning. And this uh, there was a bright star. Came out, came out of the, came out of the clouds, and it was just hauling. I mean, it was moving. So I grabbed my phone, and started filming it. Um, I reported it, and then I got hurt sometime during that that I don't know somewhere around the middle of September. I got hurt, so I couldn't skate. I was going nuts at the house, didn't know what to do. So I grabbed my phone. I was looking at the video, and as I'm looking at it, I noticed. I paused it, you know, played back and forth. And I noticed that there was something, it looked like there was something inside, whatever, whatever was coming out of the clouds, whatever it was, it looked like there was something inside of it. So I got this app, it's a video leak. So I took it into my, into my app and I, I zoomed into it as much as I could. And I started playing with the colors. And the more that I played with the colors, the more that something was being revealed, like there was definitely something in there, you know? So I kept messing with it and then after playing with it for a while, what have, have you guys ever watched Prometheus? The movie? Prometheus yeah. is this movie, right? Okay. There's a spaceship in that movie. And I remember when I watched that movie and I'm and I'm I'm telling I'm telling my buddy, I go, dude, who the who the hell comes up with that idea? Like who just sits there and says, Hey, let me let me just draw up this this spaceship for this movie. And it, it's because it, it was kind of crazy looking you know you remember the ship it was kind of like a like a sea i don't know it was kind of crazy looking yeah it was well, cool what it, it was exactly the same thing that the Prometheus, the Prometheus ship was made so that kind of tripped me out like dude wait a minute it's too much of a coincidence it's too it, they look too much alike so um that that just got me. All of a sudden, I went from making videos of skating to just, you know, just taking videos, you know, of uh, different things. You know, now I'm going back to the picture of the light that that I captured a year ago, and I'm playing with that light. And that light, I'm still I'm still messing with that light. That light came out with so much stuff, and then it came out with the same thing that I caught in the star that came out. Now that was too much of a coincidence. So I'm just playing with this phone, just just playing with this light, and so much stuff is coming out of this light. I'm just like, I'm telling everybody, dude, is this normal? Like, I mean, is this? I even try to find people that knew about photography to explain to me why this light was coming out with so much stuff when I changed the colors. Anyways, um, it was sometime. What was it? I don't know. Sometime in the beginning of the year, um, I go to certain spots to go skate you know, at parking lots. And I'm at Stater Brothers and I'm skating. It was about 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, I go to the Stater Brothers a lot. And this bum comes out of nowhere. I'd never seen this bum before and I skated there a lot. You know, he was, you know, white, long white beard. And um, I, he was going to ask for change. So I kind of told him, dude, I go, I have no money, man. Don't, don't even bother me, whatever, right? And he's like, no, I just want to, so I was like, oh, my bad, you know. So I was being cool with him. We were talking. And um, he goes, I guess he was watching me. I don't know. Because I, 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 I kind of danced my skateboard. So I have a, I have a speaker in the, back of, in the back of my bag. So he tells me, he tells me, can you play a song for me? And I was like, yeah, sure, man. I'll, what, do you want, what do you want me to play for you, man? I'm, I'm good for new songs. And he tells me, here they come. Now, I never heard that. I never heard that. He goes, I go, what? He goes, yeah, here they come by 10 years after. I was like, all right, I'll play it. I put it on. It started out like like a Star, like a Star Trek movie, like a Star Trek uh, song from the 70s. But then they got pretty good. The beat, was, the beat was pretty good. So I'm jamming to it. And this guy, this that I've never seen before, this bum, he's sitting on the floor, Indian style. And he was, I mean, he was so happy. And I was wondering why he was so happy. And I think, well, maybe he hasn't heard music in a long time. But 
I mean, he was just beyond happy. He was excited as hell, and it was a good experience. You know, at the end, I ended up giving him 60, 60 bucks. So anyways, three days later, I'm in Huntington Beach, and I'm skating downtown, and then it was 11 o'clock again. I'm, I'm about done, so I go to my car, and I'm kind of like relaxing, you know, letting the sweat come off me. And this beach bum that I've never seen before comes out and starts talking. I talk to, I, I talk to everybody, you know, songs so are cool. So he starts talking to me, right? I'm on my phone playing with this light still. So I'm like listening to him, not, not trying to be rude, but I still want to focus on what I'm doing. And he tells me, you know that hex figure sign that, you, that you've been looking at? And I kind of stopped what I was doing because that light that I was playing with, it, it started out with a hexagon. And then after that, all these weird things came out. So when he said that, I kind of stopped what I was doing on my phone. I was like, uh, okay, yeah. And he's like, that hexagon, he said, that is the nap, that is like the compass for the galactical mothership of, and I was like, what? I mean, he was just talking. I, I, he was just talking, you know, I wasn't sure what to take of him, you know, like, is he, is he, is he like a little, you know, sick in the head or like, I don't know, it just wasn't right the way he just, I mean, he was just talking crazy. So right. I start playing. He tells me, can you Google the flower of life? And I go, dude, I go, man, I'm, I'm like in the middle of something, man. You can't just tell me to stop what I'm doing so I can Google something for you. And he goes, I'm trying to help you. And I was like, what? Yeah. He goes, I'm trying to help you on, on figuring out what you're, what you're, I don't know what he said. So I stopped and go, all right, man, let me Google this. So I Googled the flower of life. And when I looked at it, it, it made me kind of think like, whoa, wait a minute. Because that, if you Google flower of life, what that was showing me was the same kind of colors and the same kind of graphics that this light was giving me on my phone. So I kind of, I was like, okay, what's going on, you know? And then, um. He explains to me a little bit about that, and then he tells me, um, "Google, Google something cube. I can't even pronounce. But it, it's a, it's a cube with um, a bunch of diamond shapes inside, and then there's like a, a circle in the middle." And he explains. He 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 starts to he starts to explain to me every single line, how it works, and I am totally following him. And I'm like, holy shit, like I'm, I'm understanding what he's telling me and I see it and it's just, it's, it's crazy, you know? Right. And I tell him, dude, after, after, he, after he told me all this, I go, dude, man, here, check this out, man. Look, look what I'm looking at. And he tells me, no, no, I don't have time to look at your, I don't have time to look at your pictures, man. I got to go. And he left. Huh. Now, um, Two, I think the day the day after that, I started listening to the song that um, this guy told me. His name was what was his name? John, I think. John. He was. He said he was from Laguna Beach, and a uh, professional skater. I don't know. So I started listening to the song that he that he told me to play, and that song "Here They Come" was pretty. It was pretty intense. I mean, what it was saying was, "Here they come." Out of the sun, they come with their wings, and they come from far, far away. I mean, if you get a chance, Google that, and it's crazy. Um, and I ended up making a video about that, and it was kind of, it's kind of weird, man. I mean, it's it that whole experience was pretty crazy because I don't know, you know, I'm not a believer, a hardcore believer in that, but the experience that I went through all that, I felt like. I felt like that whatever I was looking at my phone, you ladies, whatever, and these bums that I met, I felt like they weren't really bums. Like they were, they, they were people. I, they were, they were, you know, body. They were, they were people, but they weren't really people inside of them. If that makes any sense, just because of the way they came at me, and I've never seen them before after that. Um, and so now I'm like, every time that I see something weird, I take a picture of it and I start playing with it, and only. You know, I, I could take a picture of a light of a plane and start playing with it, and nothing nothing comes out like this light comes out on my phone. Um, I don't know if they're real or what, man, but uh, that experience definitely made me a believer. And um, 
yeah, that, that's my story, man. It was, it's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Do you think he was like, they were aliens or they were coming there to tell you where they were from without actually telling you where they were from? I, I, yeah, you know what? I, I think so. I mean, you know, I'll send you a, I'll send you a video of what comes out of this light, but you know, uh-huh. all the stuff that came out of this light, you know, thinking about it, there's, there's, there's this thing that comes out in the sky when the light blinks. I'll, I'll send it to you, but the sky looks like a circuit board and the light moves with that circuit board in a mathematical kind of a sync- sequence. And when the light shuts off, it looks like something opens and closes. So I feel like that's a port. That's like a portal that, that, uh, that, that I, that I, that I ended up capturing on the phone. You know, I did some research where we can't see, we're blind to certain colors. So we can't see certain things that other things that like spiders, spiders can see things that we can't. And, um, I think that by changing the colors of my phone on, on, on these lights that appear that are not normal lights, um, it exposes what they are through the phone because we can't see it, but we have to be able to do the focus, the focus switch colors to however we want it. So, yeah, I think that, um, that they're, they're around us and we don't even know it. We don't even see them. You know, I mean, I think spiders can see them, but we can't. I mean, I don't know. That's just, it sounds crazy, man. But yeah, um, I think that, yeah, they're UFOs. And I think that, you know, I'll send you this other one. I grabbed, I don't even know how I did this, but something, something made me grab a video that I made and grab two of them. And made me just, I just grabbed two videos exactly the same and made them into a pyramid. And when I made them into a pyramid, the things that came out, now this video that I made is all from this light that, that I captured. It's, there's no uh, effects, nothing. It's just the light that, the things that the light came out with. When I made them into a pyramid, the things that, that it showed me were pretty awesome to you. It was pretty kind of scary. I mean... There were some weird spaces that were coming out. Like at the end, there was this space that looks like a praying mantis, praying mantis but like it's wicked. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, what I, I'll tell you what we do is for the next show or next time you can get on, we'll we'll play the video up here. I can pull it up on my screen instead of having the sign, and then you can walk us through what we're oh, seeing. Dude, yeah. yeah, that would be sweet, man. Because it's it's yeah. crazy. Man. Thank you for letting me share, man, because people, when I talk about it, they, they just like, I mean, they, they look at me like I'm crazy, man. And it sucks to feel that way. You know, so I just don't talk about it because it sucks to feel that people think that you're crazy, but you know that you've seen this, you, know, you experienced it, you know? Yeah, just, that's most of the people here. That's what we're going through. So you're not crazy and you can call up anytime you want and uh, come back in and tell some more stories and we'll go through your videos next time you come on too. All right. I just... I have another person in the green room, and I just wanted to get to them real quick before we. Yeah, thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks again, dude. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, brother. All right, have a great night. You too. Thank you. Yep. All right. I invite you. You know who you are. Welcome. In. Hi. How are you doing? All right. I have two of them. If that's it, they're short. Right. So. Yeah. I, I, I haven't reached a conclusion, but I do found I found them quite fascinating. Um, so one time I was looking up in the sky towards Mars. Uh, Mars was to the left of me, probably in the night sky, probably off by about six feet. So that gives you an idea, kind of, right? So it was off to the right of Mars. So I noticed these two uh, lights that were stationary. But then I, uh, when I looked above, all of a sudden I saw one st- uh, light that was stationary and started moving towards the other two lights in that direction from my observation point, right? So I thought, okay, it just started moving. That could be a satellite or, you know, it could be anything, right? So he gets down there and when it gets about an inch away from the other two, the one on the right, all of a sudden takes off to my right and it goes about an inch, and then a big, big flash of light goes off, and it disappears completely. I thought, okay, that's weird. 
<laughs> but I don't know, but that's weird. And then the other one on the left-hand side moved, started heading towards the left. And it kept going. The one at the top actually did a 90-degree turn and turned towards the left and started going at, and started going in the same direction as the first light. They both joined up with a cluster of stars that kind of look like you remember the uh, TV series uh, Buck Rogers? Yeah. Okay. It was it was kind of like that where they didn't go into it, but they joined up with it. And I was I was looking at that where it was at, and they they just stopped right there. And I was looking at it and says, "Huh, that actually." And so I was putting it all together. I was like, "Okay, that is weird." So I don't know what to think of that. That was weird, especially the what blew me away was the one on, that took off to the right and just disappeared in a in a, in a bright flash. Uh, everything else, I was thinking, okay, most things in nature do not make a ninety degree turn. I don't know of any that and ex uh, you know that do that. Um, the other one was was a more of a ghost supernatural that I'm not sure if that's what it was, but it does indicate it to me. Um, uh, I went down to my niece's house one day for the for the second time. First time we had a great visit, no problem. The second time I went down there, I felt a crushing presence all around me. That was the only way I could describe it. I mean, it, it did not feel comfortable at all. I don't know what it was. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm just tired. Maybe anything, right? So I went to sleep. I said, you know, guys, I'm going to bed. I, I got to go to bed. <clears throat> I got up the next morning, went, uh, felt that, still felt it a little bit, but I thought, okay, let me wake up a little bit. Uh, and I went out for a smoke, and I felt great. It went away. I went back in. It was instantaneously back around me again. I thought, okay, I, I need some coffee then. Maybe that's it. And I'm drinking the coffee, and it wouldn't go away. I went back outside and instantly went away. Had a cigarette. I was like, okay, this is weird. So I went back inside, and instantly it was all over me again. So I had gotten up about 8 o'clock. And by noon, I just, I couldn't handle it more. And I got up and just left. I didn't say goodbye to nobody. I just, and it's the second I got outside to my car and left, I felt fine. Everything was great. So I don't know. That was my two experiences. Well, thanks for sharing. I mean, yeah, I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> yeah. The first one was probably a little more bizarre than the second one. The second one could have been anything. And they, I mean, but my niece did say that they believe there is a ghost in their house. So, because I remember talking to him later, and she goes, but you don't have to worry about him. He's never caused any harm. It's a little boy. And I'm like, that doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what you were feeling then, is maybe the presence of something in there that you just didn't know how to handle it, so you didn't feel good about it. But it might, it might have been just an innocent little boy, you know, but who knows, yeah, who knows? I believe in possibilities. I don't discount anything because I don't know everything. So, I mean, what do I, what do I know? I don't know shit. Exactly. That's exactly how I am because you don't know what's going on. And you're going to learn something new tomorrow that's going to blow your mind even more. Yep. Yeah. I Like a Bigfoot and all these cryptozoology. You know, the one thing I will say is that most of the evidence that I find that people bring forth to support the, this, the theories, I, 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 don't, I don't buy them, really, that I see them as there are other explanations that call. But every once in a while, you know, there's that 1% that gets your head scratched and you go, hmm, I can't think of anything else that would make sense with this. But that doesn't mean I'm wrong. But I mean, there's that 1% of evidence that it just really sticks in your head. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly yep. what you mean. I actually saw a video today that is probably, if it's real, it's like the best, one of the best UFO videos I've ever seen. It was up on uh, on Facebook, I think. Was it? No, it was, it was on here on TikTok, but it just today. And it's probably going to be making the round, so keep an eye out. It's, it's like some objects flying into the clouds, but you can see clear as day. Blue oh, were they up on top green. of a hill or top of a mountain? And well, oh, no, well there I, was a, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I think they're in their car or something. The camera's real shaky, and it's on it. It's making the rounds, but dude, this thing is so real, and it, it's got the lightning, like these blue lightning bolts. But it looks like something from a movie, and it's going around. It's the craziest thing ever. 
Yeah, I saw one documentary they were doing a doc. They wouldn't allow it in the document. That was the claim later uh, that they wouldn't allow it in the documentary. But they were doing some documentary about some mountaintop and, you know, hikers and all that. Right. And the film showed later. They didn't put it in the movie or in the documentary uh, for obvious reasons. They said we didn't want this kind of publicity. But they 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 actually got on camera, according to them, and you can you can see them plain as day. Um, these uh, airships, three of them, uh, coming by them so fast. But you you see them clear as day on camera, and they claim that was unlike anything that. And these were educated people, like uh, scientists and uh, you know smart people, you know. Yeah. And they said. And a lot of them have government con uh, government contracts and whatever. They said, I, don't, I wish I could come up if I could find it again. But they said they didn't recognize the vehicles, the type of vehicles. And they were they went literally, they said with they went like 50 or no, it was 75 or 100 miles in like a matter of seconds. This I mean, from the from the from the, the they saw it in their eyes. And they said, what is that? And they turned the camera over, and then within seconds, it had passed them, and it went out of their eyesight. And I was like, wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that, there was that 1% and it goes, that is interesting. And then these jet fighters went, went past right afterwards, so that was kind of helped convincing. Those were recognized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things going around in that sky. We'll never know what they are. <laughs> yep. All right, my friend. Thanks for letting me up. All right. Thank you very much. And if you have any more stories, you're welcome back anytime to come on. Sure. All right, my friend. Have a good day. Good night. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Mickey John, bringing you on. Hello, hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Going on. It's going, it's going. Let me turn this up real quick. Um, I've been listening uh, since, uh, what's his name, Jose left. Yeah. Okay, and then after that, I listened to everybody else after that. From, oh, geez, Yuri, um, and so, oh, not here for you, of course, and then everybody else beyond that. And I dozed off. <laughs> Oh, no. All right. I do. Uh, I am going to be. But I, I'm going to make mine real quick. Mine is like similar to do not hear just real quick. Same same scenario. Three three dots in the sky. It looked like Orion's belt. Okay, this was mid 90s. I'm 45 years old. The two stars on the left, uh, quote unquote, start spinning around each other counterclockwise and then left, north and south. And then the one star that was left on the far right top right he went east and just like he said fighter i mean my for instance uh four fighter jets start flying towards one towards um south and one towards north and then one towards east they all, so they all like went after them same scenario but mine was like mid 90s oh wow yeah same what, what same, state was same again? say it again what state was it in I was in South Dakota. I am in South Dakota. All right. And then my uh, and my second one is a cliffhanger. I'll leave for you. Oh, did he pause or did he? <laughs> you got us. You got us good there. <laughs> All right. The second one. We got a cliffhanger, folks. That was good. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cliffhanger, yep. You're going to have to tune in next week. So, uh, we're not. We're going to.